みなさん、こんにちは。And welcome to Shogo's podcast. So, guys, I am very, very happy that I、uh, was able to complete the video filming and also, well, actually, two day seminar in Osaka with Asayama Ichidenryu san. Thank you very much. So, I was able to meet the headmaster of Asayama Ichiden Kai Six Sensei, and、um, you'll be, I think I posted a few stories on Instagram and also on YouTube, so you might see me fighting him, fighting with him using a f u k u r o s h i n a i or also fighting,、uh, doing a demonstration of how fast their katana drawing is. Yeah, so I hope you can check those YouTube sh- stories out if you haven't seen them yet. And it was just simply an amazing, amazing experience for me. And Very fortunately, I think I will be able to maybe see them again in more opportunities because every year they are going to be coming to the Kansai region too to do more seminars or take part in events and such. So I'll be able to see them. That's going to be a lot of fun.、Um, so, yeah. I'll definitely be able to work with them even more. So, this is not going to be the last time I'll be able to collaborate or、uh, work together with them. So, this is just simply very, very exciting. And I just look forward to the future a lot. Now,、um, today in this podcast, though, I like to talk a little bit about what I have noticed through the videos that I've made together with Six Sensei. Now, to be very honest with you guys, in the video,、um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be getting a lot of comments saying that my skills are undeveloped or blah, blah, blah. But to be very honest, after a two day seminar of six hours in Osaka, which takes two hours、um, for me on train without sitting down、uh, with a big suitcase with me, was、uh, pretty tiring in the first place.、Um, two hours to go, two hours to come back. So there's four hours on the train. Of per day during two days and six hours each. So it was pretty long for me, first of all. So I was already very tired. But even if we leave that out, it was very, very,、mm, what should I say? It was very sad, sad for me to see myself in the videos and noticing that my skills are really not、uh, really undeveloped. Especially, I've noticed that I have not been able to use my legs, my feet. So, this is today's conclusion, what I want to talk about today. This is, the main, this is the main topic. I have not been able to connect my feet, my legs, to my katana. So, I often explain that swinging the katana, becoming better at swinging the sword, the Japanese swords, there's actually different levels to it. First, when you're a complete beginner, you start to you try to use your arms to swing the katana. So, your forearm, Especially tends to get very sore in the beginning of your training. And then eventually, you start to be able to relax your arms a little bit and you start to use your shoulders to swing your katana. Yeah. And then next is your back muscles. And then eventually, we te- the people will teach you that you need to be able to swing the sword with the bottom of your feet, which means you're using your whole body. To swing the sword and not relying on just your arms. Your arms are just con- is a part of your body that's connected to the sword, and you don't use your muscles of your arms. In the end, your body、um, stableness of how you stand or how you walk is what swings the katana. I hope this makes sense.、Um, but I've been trying to, of course, aim for this. And recently, I think, but from a few months ago, I've started to consci- consciously try to swing the katana with my,、uh, with my legs as much as possible. But for a long time, I haven't been able to understand this. And this, it's not only the katana that I've been trying to focus on this, or、uh, my instructors have been pointing me out about this. It's because in no theater, when I do the dancing, my sensei has been teaching me that, s h o g o you're、mm, floating, you're. Your movements are still a little bit、uh, floaty, fluffy, you know, not stable enough. Yeah. And that's the same reason. My legs, my body is not kind of not completely stable because I'm not focusing on my legs. Or, in a way, if you know about Budo martial arts, I can use this word, but in a way, it's because I'm not focusing on my tanding, which is the center of your body, which, which in Asian culture, I think. East Asian culture is believed to be the core of your energy. It's right, it's like a few 10 centimeters or 10 to 15 centimeters under your belly button is a place called Tandem, which was in the past believed, well, even today, is believed where your energy is, the core of your energy is. So you need to really focus on the Tandem for everything. And again, no theater dancing and also Shakuhachi too. Shakuhachi playing the bamboo flute playing, you need to put power into your tanding and then blow from there for more beautiful、uh, sounds and also for longer、uh, being able to make one sound longer. you know. So 
I really noticed, especially if you take a look at the video um, in the YouTube stories, I really hope it's still there when when this um, podcast is out. I'll try to try to post this podcast as soon as possible. But um, if you see me um, following after Six Sensei, and I draw the sword, and he turns back and with the sword in, in front of him to fight back, if you take a look at that video, you can see that my legs are um, a little bit wobbly. That is because when I drew up my sword, I'm bringing my whole body up along with the sword, which means I'm not stable. That's the reason why when I when I try to swing the sword down, I'm like wobbling a little bit, right? That is really, really mm, terrible as a swordsman, to be honest, yeah. And I've noticed that after the two-day seminar, my shoulders were aching so much. And it's because I was very, very nervous. Now, when you get nervous when you try to handle the katana, I feel that the stage of, again, from your arms to your shoulders to your back muscles to your legs, go back one stage, if that makes sense. It goes back one stage. So for me, because uh, the maximum I can do is to use my back muscles, when I'm nervous or when I'm not calm enough, it comes back to my shoulders. And that's the reason my shoulders would hurt. Like a few years back, maybe three or four years back, probably my arms would have started to hurt. But my arms do not hurt at all, even after training for six hours, you know. My arms don't hurt, but my shoulder were in pain so much. So this is also another proof that I'm not being able to use my legs yet. Mm -hmm. I'm still focusing on, you know, my my hands and all of these the end parts, you know, and not the core of my body. So being able to um, collaborate with Six Sensei and Asamai Chiden Kaisan, I was able to notice, I, I mean, I knew it for a long time because a lot of my instructors have been telling me, but being able to film that video together with them and um, learning their skills, I was able to really find out what was what's the fundamental problem of my sword skills, right? now and this has been a great experience for me so right now what i'm focusing on right now if you see six sensei's movie movements if you jump to their channel and check them out it's almost like he's attached to the floor but it's not like he's like stomping on the floor every time but he is he just looks so stable it's almost like he's there's a magnet on the floor and under his feet you know and he's completely attached to the ground Although, even though he's flexible at the same time, and he could jump if he wanted to, he could lift a lot of feet up even if he wanted to, but still, he looks like he's almost attached to the floor. And I recently, whenever I do my suburi, the, the um, katana swinging exercises, or when I do my kata, I've recently been focusing on this a lot, trying to imagine that I am attached to the floor almost. This doesn't mean that I'm trying to, you know, put a lot of weight onto my feet. No, it's, it's about trying to be very stable constantly and focusing, putting my focus more on my lower body and less of my upper body. Because so far, um, without being conscious a lot about this, this fact, I'm only using my upper body because I can only maximum use up to my back muscles. So it has really, really changed my skills of swordsmanship. Swordsmanship, yeah. And uh, I'm really, really glad that I was able to do this. So again, as I was saying earlier, they'll be having more occasions to come over to the Kansai region too. Right now, they'll probably be coming at least twice a year to Kyoto or Osaka. Mm -hmm. And they they only have branches in the Kanto region, which is near Tokyo right now. But they they were saying that they really hope to be able to um, open up branches in the Kansai region as soon as possible too. So I'm very very looking forward to that. Yeah. And I just wanted to say, um, I say my chin Kaisan again is a great channel, a great duha. So if you're interested in Japanese Buddha martial arts, although they don't make any content in English yet, I really hope uh, you can uh, check out their channel once again if you haven't haven't yet. And just watching them doing their skills is really majestic. So I hope you can check it out for me. So then everyone, as I always say, the ultimate goal of my life is to make all Japan lovers' dreams come true. I know there's a lot of people studying Japanese, willing to come to Japan to travel, study or work, or even train our traditional culture and such, such as Kobudo, right? However, I am very afraid that Japan will not be able to make everyone's dreams come true in the future because we're facing a lot of social problems, we are losing our traditional culture, and the younger generations who are supposed to be carrying on the good things about Japan are dying because of all the social issues being shoved against them. So I really want to dedicate my life to try to make 
make Japan a better place. I want to try to solve the social problems, preserve and evolve traditional culture, and also help out the younger generations so they can have a better future. And to do this, right now the nearest goal I have is to become a Japanese language instructor, a qualified one. Um, there is actually a national qualification, well, official qualification is approved by the government where you are able to have the skills to teach Japanese. I actually have a Kofi page, which is a, a pla um, donation platform very close to Patreon. Yeah. And I'm actually raising money right now to go to school to get that qualification. Now, so it'd be great if you can check out my Kofi page through the description box or also the comment sections to support me if you can. Thank you very much. I actually already have achieved my dream, but I'm. Um, I will be uh, accepting donations until the end of September. Maybe the, when this podcast is out, maybe September won't be over actually. But still, even if that happens, I still will be um, setting up new goals every time to be great if you can continue to support me. All right, guys, thank you so much. Um, and if you have the time, check out my YouTube stories. If it wasn't there, please let me know. I'll try to post it again. And uh, if you notice the things that I've explained in this podcast, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much, guys.